Hi, so my name is Emma Bjorklund, and today I will be reflecting on academic language from the three videos um, we were assigned to watch. So I learned that academic language is a set of words that express some abstract, complex ideas that kind of require some higher level thinking. And um, with academic language, it takes a lot more to actually understand and comprehend uh, the meaning behind some of these words, uh, even as a pre-service teacher. And to understand academic language, it's not only to be able to read academic language, but it's also to be able to speak it and use it in the correct context and be able to ex um, occasionally express it with some visuals some different uh, dimensions of academic language can be considered vocabulary, which is at the top something we're very familiar with and which is usually taught in a classroom. Um, and then there's the syntax, which is right below it, and that contains more of um, the structure that, um, that comes with academic language and using an incorrect um, sentence structure. Then there's discourse, um, which is essentially the most important one, meaning uh, that it has the overall structure of a message attached to it um, to clarify a message to the audience. So being able to use and understand discourse, um, which is the most important part of academic language, is essential for students and teachers alike to understand especially for a teacher who needs to be able to convey it to his students and make, ensure that they understand what the uh, academic language actually means. Uh, another important thing that I've learned is that academic language is everywhere. It's not just in a classroom specifically, but it can be used in a bunch of different contexts. And that can be in places such as a museum or in your profession. And it's language specific to you. Um, for example, things in regards to a teacher, um, talking about the teacher performance assessment and components to that and other teacher-like language would be foreign to anyone who's not in the teacher um, profession, that, or teaching profession, that is. So it's everywhere, and there's specific ways to use that language. And one um, thing that I picked up from uh, one of the academic language videos is how important um, sentence structure is and how easy you can use sentence frames um, to help guide students. So uh, leaving blanks within sentences for any subject area to teach students about um, how to correctly place academic language into sentences and allow them to figure out how to use it correctly. And uh, I've found that that was most intriguing to me. Um, I, know, I almost thought of it as Mad Libs. And with Mad Libs, you always think they're kind of funny and uh, in the sense that uh, they're just, you can play around with them. And as a teacher seeing something of that but having value in a classroom where you can actually teach them academic language using blanks in sentence structures to teach students is something I never even thought of really. And being able to use um, marine fish have gills or um, some other things along those lines or um, multiply, divide, and square root in math and chemical formula and all that in science, all of these components can be placed into a sentence structure. It doesn't have to just be in literature. So 
I personally would love to use that and I, I uh, in my own classroom and just be able to kind of use it for myself to learn um, academic language because I feel you uh, the way you really need to learn academic language is through practice and being able to use academic language um, purposefully and intentionally cor and thus correctly is so important and to be um, be taught that way is even better so I would love to be able to portray that later in my um, professional career. Additionally, um, I know the teacher performance assessment touch, um, when focusing on academic language focuses on three things and that's um, the forms um, in regards to word choice and the linguistic features to the functions or the purpose of the academic language and three the fluency which is how purposeful um, it is and the opportunities they have to practice it. Um, so I, I feel that I, as though I am not, um, I'm not the best with those three in regards to academic language yet, uh, but I'd really like to improve on being able to create lessons um, where I can focus on the academic language and make sure the forms, the functions, and the fluency are all covered to the point that the students can um, actually learn and comprehend the academic language they are using. Oh, excuse me. Um, also, I would like to say that um, academic language um, is in, as I said before, in all subject areas, and so certain subject um, areas in their textbooks specifically um, have writing in a very specific way and their structures are very different um, where some can have more comparatives or narratives or um, things along the, those lines so the different structures as a teacher we need a uh, or as a candidate teacher I need to become familiar with the different structures that each subject area in their texts have so I can better be able to teach the academic language so that students can comprehend the texts that they are reading. And I, I know um, I can maybe pinpoint some of these uh, structures in the academic language out um, from individual subject areas but I wouldn't say that um, I'd be able to pull, like, pull them completely out and um, teach them individually as a text so that the students can understand, at least not yet. So I would love to improve on that. As a teacher candidate, um, I also know I must focus and learn to reflect on how I use language and how the language is used um, over a range of purposes within a lesson and be able to identify it the single singular purpose to provide students more opportunities of practice um, so if I can overall gather that and really perfect it um, being able to identify and reflect on that so that I can give my students a better chance with learning academic language and applying it and practicing it, I will feel better as a teacher candidate and eventually, I hope, as a teacher. So that's kind of what I've learned about uh, academic language and it was quite a bit um, and I never re truly understood its importance. Um, because I'm realizing now, even at still being a teacher candidate and a student at Bradley University, that it, I am still don't know all the academic language. Uh, 
because there is so much to learn, even as a proficient learner um, or proficient in English. There is so much that I still don't know um, in regards to academic language. So especially those who are not um, proficient or fluent in um, English, I can't even imagine how overwhelming the academic language could be. So I truly want to work on uh, not only for myself, but for my future students be able to understand a bunch of academic language to be able to better uh, teach them and model for them how to use the academic language correctly. And I know I'm still learning, so I can't cover all the academic language. Um, but I would like to improve on it and be able to later perfect them. And that's my reflection on academic language. Um, academic language.